can the GPD be more than just a portable gaming console? Today's video is a bit different than the ones I've uploaded in the past. I'll be showing my home workstation setup. Now, fair warning, I have not done any sort of cable management in this setup as I'm still debating if this is the best way to work. In this video, I will be showcasing the GPD Win 2 from a productivity use case, something that not many consider when looking at the GPD Win 2. As with many of my videos, I'll start by sharing a little bit of backstory to highlight my love of mobile technology. When I was in college, I bought a device that most would have considered a toy. At best, a companion device to your more formal laptop. It was the HP Hornada 720. That was an awesome little device that had an outstanding battery life, outstanding keyboard, and software that would allow me to use it to take notes in class and use it as my primary device for about two years. I sold it, and to this date, I regretted it. I've missed the ultra portability and have been trying to fill that void ever since. I think you can see a theme here. GPD is building the devices I've been dreaming for ever since my college days. One of the things you'll need to be able to pull this off is to use a USB-C hub. Now, the cool thing about this USB hub is that it has power pass through. So you plug in your GPD Win 2 charger here, and then you get three USB-C three ports, an SD card reader, and an HDMI port, which is what we're going to be using to drive the multiple displays. One of the other cool things about this USB-C hub is that it doesn't get too hot. And Another required component to be able to drive multiple displays, and it's actually one of the cool things about the GPD Win 2, is that it can drive two displays simultaneously. So I'm going to be using an HDMI to micro HDMI. So we're going to drive one display through micro HDMI, the other display through a USB-C hub and using full HDMI. The other thing I'm going to be using to achieve this is the Logitech K360, if not mistaken, which is the keyboard and it works with a unifier dongle with a mouse, which is the M510. Both are relatively inexpensive. The intent with this is to keep the setup price as low as possible, given that the GPD, with all things considered, is not a cheap device. As you saw from an earlier shot, I work standing up. So even though I'm going to be placing the GPD here, I'm going to use this as a stand for the GPD. I'm going, to, I'm going to prop it open. I'm still going to take a shot and show you wide open how the GPD can drive two 1080p monitors plus its internal monitor without any real problems. As I pointed out in the beginning of the video, I love technology. So I have multiple devices. Out of the bunch, I have three quote unquote most important or at least most used devices. My Dell gaming work laptop, my Asus UX305, which falls in the category of an ultra portable, and my Samsung Chromebook Pro. As I stated, I have other devices, but I use them a lot less. When you look at the specs of these devices, the Win 2 is packing quite the punch considering the size and price. You need to keep in mind that the MacBook comes with very similar, if not identical specs, and a lot less ports at twice the price. This is when you start to realize that this little machine has the power to do a lot more than just gaming. And the funny thing here is that as of now, my Win 2 is my second most powerful portable device, has better specs and cooling than both the Asus and the Chromebook. I've watched tons of reviews for the Win 2 and an area that no one focuses on is the keyboard. It feels very similar to the keyboard of the Nokia phones of old. After plugging in everything, I'm now running two 1080p displays from the GPD. What I want to show you is the fact that I am in fact running everything through the Win and the temperatures and everything work just fine. And I can even do a little bit of gaming with an additional controller. Just to prove that the Win is running everything, I'm gonna be moving the Steam window from screen to screen. But going back to the story, I work as a project manager. So as you might imagine, my day-to-day -day job does not require me to use any crazy power hungry apps. I use Office 365 with MX Project and Visio, plus all sorts of real-time collaboration and communication apps like Skype for business, WhatsApp, MS Teams, Discord, etc. I think you can detect a theme here. The key for me is being able to communicate at all times. The Win 2 on its own can handle pretty much all the tasks I do on my vastly more powerful and less portable Dell. The only limitation with the Win 2 is that you won't be able to type and navigate at the same speed as you would on a normal laptop. This makes it the perfect portable companion device, placing emphasis in being companion and not your main device. Once I got all the accumulated gaming deficit in me back into control, I started using my Win 2 for work-related tasks. The Win 2 has allowed me to do things that I would not consider doing on a phone because of the limited functionality in mobile apps. 
Thanks to the Win2, I'm always available if anything urgent requires my attention. And again, I'm not limited to mobile apps as I'm running the full-fledged Office Professional Plus 2016 suite on my device. I can tackle quick document and presentation editing, even authoring if the content is not too massive. I've edited spreadsheets. So the Win2 has the capacity of becoming an awesome companion device for when you're traveling. But what about when you're home? On its own, I wouldn't recommend the Win2 as your main working device. It's just too small to work with you, and you'll be bottlenecked by your thumb's typing speed. But here's the thing. The Win2 is not limited to only being what it currently is. With its USB Type-A and Type-C, you have the possibility to expand its usability exponentially. These ports are more than enough to convert this little machine into a true working little marvel. The screen is small, at 6 inches and 720p. However, with the micro HDMI, you can add an additional screen very easily. This would allow you to see things a lot better. The USB Type-A will allow you to use one of those cheap Logitech keyboards and mouse combos. This solves the typing speed problem. Where things get very, very interesting is when you introduce hubs. I currently own a USB Type-C hub that adds three USB Type-A, full-size HDMI, and SD card reader with power pass-through. This alone gives me more than enough ports, plus the ability to run a secondary external monitor. And if you want to take things to the extreme, I have a USB 3.0 Type-A hub that allows for two additional displays through USB. This hub also expands things on top of the USB Type-C. With this hub, I would get six additional USB Type-A ports, a LAN port, audio combo jack, and two video out via HDMI and DVI. This hub is only around $85, which if you consider what it allows you to do, it's very cheap. So, with these two hubs, you end up getting a similar amount of ports that you would get on a regular PC, and the potential to run four external displays at 1080p each. All this expandability only through two ports of the Win2, a USB Type-A and USB Type-C. This is insane. I recently did a video trying to answer the question if the Win2 was really worth it. The video only looked at the gaming aspect of things. When you add all these expandability options to the equation, the answer becomes a hell yeah. To close things out for today, I'm planning on buying an extra monitor and the USB Type-A hub and will use the Win2 as my main device once I have these two things with me. I will do a 15 day challenge to see if I can actually use the Win2 as my main and only working device. If I can do this, then the $649.99 price I paid for the Win2 was a crazy bargain. And just as a side note, I find myself preferring the Win2 controller over the Logitech controller I'm using right now. And if you pay attention to the screen on the right, you'll notice that I'm constantly hitting the power limit throttle. I'm currently running the Win2 at 8 watts, so maybe adjusting to 9 or 10 would do the trick. So that's gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching today's video. Hit the like button if you liked the video. If you didn't, let me know why and I'll try to address it in an upcoming one. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon if you haven't to get notified every time I upload a video. Thank you again.